Hello everyone, today we are taking a look at the Meteor 85 from Beta FPV. And I got away with something that I oftentimes advocate or caution against, but that will come during the flight footage. It comes with 1103, 11,000 kV motors, and those motors are powering Jim Fan 2015 by Bladed Props. The all-in-one flight controller down there is an F4, it is 1 and 2S compatible, and it has a 12 amp ESC. And I have the Waxnail edition, so I've got the Waxnail VTX with the current firmware as of uh, November, let's say, as well as the Nano Camera. Beta FPV also has their own antenna that they install onto the Waxnail system. Battery connector is an XT30, and it does have a covered capacitor on there. It comes with an extra set of props. Uh, one of mine got so chewed up in my flights that uh, I threw it away or I misplaced it. The end of it was kind of gone. It also comes with a USB cable, which we need this USB cable in order to get the video recording, the 1080p recording off of the Waxnail VTX. And you do need to power on the VTX with a battery while you're doing that. So you're going to need or advise that you have a small fan blowing on the VTX while you're downloading those 1080p files off of the VTX. I believe it does come with one battery, at least they list it within their specifications, uh, but that's something that you may want to ask your retailer or Beta FPV themselves. I'm guessing that most shops won't be selling this with a battery because then all these packages would have to be shipped via boat and it would take a lot longer. But I could always be wrong and they might just ship it anyways, air cargo. It does come with these pieces that you can put on the top of the canopy to kind of dress it up, but really... You probably don't want to fly with those on there because if you have a crash, they're likely to get lost. Or something you can use when you put it on your shelf. I found the battery tray to be pretty specific to these Beta FEV 452S batteries. Most of my other batteries that are this capacity as well as cell count, they just didn't fit very well and I was worried I was going to stretch them out. But of course you could always put a blow dryer on this to resize it to your size of batteries. My little favorite 2S 300 milliamp batteries that I fly around the house, these Hobby King Nanotechs, even they, those batteries are a little bit bigger than I'm comfortable with in trying to maintain the battery tray size. It weighs 51 and three quarter grams. With the Beta FPV 450 2S battery, it weighs 80.65 grams. And with my little tiny Nanotech battery, which I did fly it, but you won't see any flight footage in this video with this particular battery. It was just to get some extra flights in. Weighs just a hair under 70 grams. So it's advertised as a Meteor 85, but I'm getting at least three millimeters greater than that, so I'd call it a Meteor 88. That was motor post or motor post. Okay, we're gonna get ready to take off. This is our outside flight, and this is where I think it's kind of primarily going to be used, is, is outside, backyard, you know, front of the house, side yard, what have you, whatever uh, close space that you have or relatively small space that you have near you that allows you to pop outside and get some quick flights. That's one of the reasons why I love micros so much. I don't think this would be one that too many people would fly in a traditional house. I know, we have a fairly large house. I am going to fly it inside. I am going to show you the flight footage. Uh, there's two crashes and two near misses, I think, in that particular flight that we're going to be watching. Uh, but So I spent uh, not a lot of time flying it outside because it's cold, and that was one of my worries. And I will show you my outside cold crash, which it's about 48 degrees. Uh, the winds are relatively low, 7 to 9 miles an hour, which for my area, that's pretty good. So it feels nearly still. Uh, so we've got a good day for whooping. And I probably only got about 11 or 12 flights over the course of about a week uh, of weather allowable flights that were in the middle to upper 40s. And, and that's kind of that threshold when it comes to plastics and getting cold and being outside that... You know, if you whack something with plastic, or that has a plastic frame like many of our whoops are, it, it's really putting the, the durability at its maximum test. It's really not even fair because if you're carrying any sort of speed and you hit anything, a plastic frame, if it's very cold, is going to break. Um, and it could break severely and, and catastrophically uh, to where you have to transfer everything to a different frame. So, another word of caution. Don't fly in the cold unless you're going to crash and you're gonna accept the results of the crash. I kinda of think in, I know in quads, we, we tend to want everything to live forever and to just uh, fly well and never give us any fits, but that's just not the reality of these things. You know, we're, we're taking electronics and lithium poly polymer technology and throwing them through the air and <laughs> trying to push our skill limits and have fun and then we get out of hand a little bit and you know, just like I did, I'm gonna bonk a fence, not in this flight, I'll show you that here uh, afterwards. 
Uh, this is the full flight, uh, outside flight. Uh, but uh, to leave myself something to talk about, but also to those that might be looking for, you know, not to watch the entire video. If you're going to fly this in a house, then you're going to need to have an appropriate skill set or experience and uh, an appropriate amount of space. I found it challenging, uh, especially with uh, over four minutes of flight time and at the weight that you're carrying with the, the 450 milliamp battery. I found it much more doable to use the 300 uh, nanotechs. You know, we shave off quite a bit of weight there and that sure helps in our agility factors. Uh, I think if you're going to fly this inside, it would be more towards a warehouse, an industrial inside sort of space, a gymnasium. I know some people have access to that. Even some of the offices. I've seen some of you guys and gals that have offices that you somehow get access to. What look to be working offices, but maybe it's closed for the day or something. Setting up uh, tracks with chairs and stuff like that. I see those postings on uh, YouTube and Facebook. And uh, I'm always a little bit jealous because uh, my work, they're not going to allow anything like that. That, is, that would be a safety risk. And safety is tantamount. Um, but anyways, I think it flies pretty well. Uh, I do have, during the crash footage, or the crash flight that I'm going to show you, and I'm only going to include like a minute and a half of that, I was able to get it to yaw washout. Again, for those that aren't familiar about yaw washout, it's where you punch up and then you're going to go straight down doing a dive, and then as you're in some stage of that dive, the quad will uncontrollably pitch up and usually yaw, in my case, it always yaws to the right. I don't know if others have seen it yaw to the left or if that has something to do with proper motor rotation. But th that is something that I was able to get this to do, but I only was able to get it to do it once in all of my outside flights. And I do that sort of move probably four times in each flight. So I'm really confused about why it happened this one time, but I couldn't trigger it another time. Uh, maybe it was at the end of the battery and it was just weak or low. I don't know because I only changed props till that one prop flew apart. Okay, flight ended. We got a little over four minutes of flight and uh, that canopy came in handy because I flipped right over Seven on top of it. Let's move in. Uh, let's move on to that crash. So we're going to be coming up to the crash here real shortly um, because then I'm going to do some more flying around. Kind of one of those posts. Oh, I crashed, but I got away with it. Oh, there it was. Hit the fence. Tumble, tumble, tumble. I'm going to turtle mode, which with a 12 amp ESC, we should be fine. I know many of you have heard me caution about turtle mode in the grass, especially with 5 amp ESCs in our micros that can sometimes hurt them. Uh, but you, so I'm just going to take off and make sure everything's intact and kind of uh, a little bit of a, a celebratory fr flight in that I hit that fence and we're in the cold and I didn't break the frame. So that's a good thing, but I certainly wouldn't want to do that again. So if you're getting this and you've got a beta FPV frame that you're going to build up and it's cold in your area, I don't suggest flying it outside under 50 degrees. Just to be safe, you know, it, it could be a threshold of you know, 40 degrees. I'm not certain, but I'm certainly not going to go outside testing. Oh, there was the washout. Did you see that? If you need to, go back and wash it. It was not the most dramatic washout that I've seen before, but it did wash out. And that was something else that I wanted to point out. And all the different flights that I had outside that was the only time it washed out and i did that sort of move at that particular move i probably did twice every flight and then i have the other one where i go over the house so i'm, I'm kind of traveling sideways with the quad as i go punch open over the house and i would probably do that one or two times in those flights as well but i was only able to get that one wash out i don't mean to hit that too hard over the head it's just something that well i it, it it confused me a little bit because I couldn't make it happen again, but it's also something that I have to share so that you know what to expect when you're getting a quad. Oh, we're back inside here. Uh, when I arm, listen to the props. You can't hardly hear them until I start to ramp up the motor speed. Isn't, I found that kind of weird. Um, of course, by blades are going to emit kind of a, a higher pitch to noise, so you're probably going to wake the baby if you're looking for a quiet quad. This might not be the one that you want to pick uh, more blades tends to, I don't know if it's less decibel or if it's just less audible uh, to our ears. So uh, 20 seconds into the flight and I've already had my first crash. So crash number one uh, already. Of course, turtle moding with 2S is never a problem. Uh, if you have a problem, it's because it'll actually do a flip uh, instead of just flopping over to its other side. It'll go ahead and do a full 360 rotation. Uh, but this took me a little while to get a handle. You know, 2S, 2 inch, inside, uh, at the weight it is, it's one of those things where if you're new, you're going to want to be very ginger about flying it inside because 
uh, knickknacks, things that you see around my house. Those are the sort of things that would be in jeopardy of being knocked over. The the joy that you see between those two lamps, I did run into that at one point in time. Thankfully, no damage. The light bulbs inside even worked. Uh, got a little out of hand there as I whizzed downstairs. Had to bleed off some of that speed with a, a quick turnaround. Uh, but it's I don't want to say you can't do it because whoops can be flown in just about any space. But it's going to depend upon what your kind of flight experience is like and the space that you're flying in and your sort of flight desires. You know, are you wanting to just kind of cruise around real flat and nice and smooth and just maybe, you know, follow the cat around or follow one of the kids around the house? Then, you know, it'll be fine. The throttle management will be something to get used to if you haven't flown 2S before. Uh, but otherwise, you know, it's... It's going to fly great outside. You're going to be able to have something you could cruise around inside by lowering the camera angle. And yes, they do have that new canopy on here that allows you to, to loosen two screws and to lower the camera angle. I would just put it flat if I were you, and my camera angle isn't much off that. Um, and tootle around inside, and then if you want to go outside and then do more traditional freestyle flight or just race around, then you can always, you know, with a couple of turns of those screws mounting the camera, crank it back up. Of course, Beta FPV does offer a 65 millimeter version of this. I think they have a 65 millimeter version, don't they? I could have swore I saw that. I need to go back and look, don't I? Uh, while I'm on the page, I should mention that you don't have to get um, Walk Snail. They also offer this in HD Zero. They offer this in FR Sky as well as Express LRS. Of course, if you know me in the channel, I'm using Express LRS every time I can. Didn't quite lock in that orbit, did I? I keep trying. But it didn't quite lock it in. That's always fun. Uh, the the lights and the gates that you see in the basement, I've been enjoying those. Those are from uh, We Bleed FPV. Uh, the gate that I have is a 27 inch, uh, or not gate, the cube is a 27 inch version. It's kind of big. I should have bought the 19 inch version, but I think when I first saw that on the site, they only had the 27 inch version. So uh, something to consider. Those are fairly expensive. You know, over a hundred dollars for the cubes. Uh, the little single standing lights, those are about $49 each. Uh, they are programmable and you can, uh, well, programmable in that it's got buttons on it that allow you to have it cycle through the different things that it's programmed to do, the different light colors, the different um, sort of lighting configurations. But inside, I was routinely getting four and a half minutes, pretty solid. It didn't matter how many times I crashed or how, if I was pushing it, or if I was cruising, I would get right around four and a half minutes. And when we get back to the desk, I'll show you a super crashy flight that I had um, to where I was actually trying to do some close proximity. I was actually trying to fly through the uh, kitchen, uh, not the kitchen, but the front dining room chairs. And it didn't go very well. It's just, it's a bigger quad. So doing close proximity and small gap shooting, it's just not as friendly to that. It's not that you can't fly it outside or fly it, excuse me, fly. It's not that you can't fly it inside. I'm doing it. But I just, I guess I'm really beating that over the head. I don't want anybody to, you know, get brand new into the hobby, buy this, especially the Walk Snail or HD Zero where you're spending another hundred and some odd dollars over analog. And then you come to find out you really struggle. Yeah, if you're going to ask this for, you know, a Christmas present or something and then uh, spend all sorts of time in the sim before your first flights, yeah, maybe you can pull it off. Anything with enough time and determination. Okay, our flight has ended and our uh, quad and our battery are in good shape. 3.5 volts per cell or more, which is where I try to land disarmed. So I started to say it, then I ran out of time during the flight footage that, you know, this size is going to be fairly challenging. To give you some idea of the size difference, this is a traditional 65 millimeter tiny whoop. And at first blush, it doesn't look like that much. But when you're flying it through the air, it's surprising how much you feel, how much bigger you feel flying through the air. Just going through the doorways, my normal gaps that I've flown thousands of times, you feel different just due to that size, but I wanted to make sure I give you some perspective. If you're looking for something smaller, they do have a 75 millimeter edition. Uh, this is 1S though, so it's far less powerful. Uh, it's going to fly much differently outside, but it is a walk snail edition. If you like this and you're wanting to do something that is more indoor conducive, I would say the 75 millimeter edition is more conducive to that, but this is going to fly better outside. So if you like this configuration and your primary flight is going to be outside, definitely pick up this one. If it's going to be inside primarily or almost exclusively, then get this one. And I'll link them both down below in the video description to any site that I can find that has this or these. 
Okay, so our damage check is one of those things that I love to do, but unfortunately, I I looked before I started recording. I had this prop got all sorts of chewed up so much so that the end, and you can see this one's already damaged a little bit. Maybe you can see that. Do I need to bring it in there closer? But anyways, this one got so damaged and I kept straightening it out that I just ended up with the end was kind of tearing off. Uh, so I did remove that prop. Uh, you can also tell that it's been through some abuse. Uh, the underneath side of some of our doorways, I probably got wedged underneath there and I tried to get myself loose. So you can see that white stuff on that prop. You can see all the scuffing on the canopy from all the times I ended up on the canopy, mainly inside, of course. Uh, even look at the antenna cover here. See how some of the red has been worn off from all of my crashing. So durab durability should not be much of an issue. Of course, everybody crashes different. If you're out there crashing into cement and you like to go plaid, which is fast for anybody who's not familiar with Mel Brooks and some of his work. Um, yeah, anything can be broken. Even some of the stuff I've tested, even though it looks unbreakable. But what I'm trying to share is in my experience with my flights, with lots of crashes inside the house, it all held together very well. And something else that I was pretty surprised about, especially at this weight, and especially that this canopy is only mounted by three points. I advocate for four points because one of my concerns is as your props get beat up and you get a little bit of vibration and that builds up in your flight controller that can't quite smooth it out, that especially on an HD camera system, you'll start to see some jello. But even with my wanged up props, this one's kind of chewed up here at the end too. Oh, and this one's turned down quite a bit. How can I get that good in the camera shot? Can you guys see that? Huh. So all my props have been kind of banged up. You can definitely see where this one's got a little dent in the end and it's kind of turned down. I don't know how well it's coming through camera. Um, it will survive in most crash situations indoors unless you've got a ginormous space maybe i guess should i should say um an indoor space that's not like a cave or a salt mine or something like that to where you can really build up some speed and then run into something like iron or concrete um especially if it's cool i would suspect the salt mine would be cool um i think that's one of their primary focuses is keeping it cool but i don't know how cold i'd ever been in one. It is a little bit disappointing that this battery tray is so specific to the Beta FPV 450 batteries. There might be a battery series this capacity and cell count out there that fits just like these. I just, none of mine do. I mean, th this fits really nicely. I mean, it's it's obviously, it's made for this uh, size of battery. It, it's, it goes in snugly, but it's not terrible hard to get in there. And even my little nanotechs, I kind of have to wedge them in there kind of sideways and work them in. Um, any of the, my GNBs, the, the tattoos that I have, uh, what other brands of 2S? I have a bunch of 2S batteries and I tried going through all of them, even dating back to some old my lipo batteries. And of the ones that I found, these were the closest to fitting, but they kind of don't. It's kind of overly tight. And I use these mainly to just get extra flights in the quad, but these fit the best. So if you do pick up this thing, uh, prepare to pick up some batteries for it as well. And I noticed on their website that they kind of sell things in with options, which uh, you might call a la carte, where you can select um, not just which version, but do you want an extra frame? Do you want an extra canopy? Do you want some extra batteries with it? And then you can just kind of click the plus signs by it. Beta FPV does that. So if we were buying it from another reseller, they might not have that option, but I, I, I happened to notice that. And so I thought I should call it out. They do also have this in an analog version, which is going to be easier to fly inside because of less weight. Uh, not a lot. I would say to be an estimate 10% lighter. Um, so it would be 10% easier to fly inside. It'll also give you probably a few more seconds on the flight time, flight performance, and flight agility, depending upon your flight style. Uh, and, of course, if you just like this sort of form factor and you want to fly it and you're flying analog, all flight is fun, whether you're doing HD flight or analog flight, they have that as an option. Um, it's just called the Meteor 85 Brushless versus this is called the Meteor 85 HD. And I am a little bit jealous because the brushless, the Meteor 85 brushless, comes with a blue canopy, a gray frame, and blue props, which I kind of partial to because I like blue. But this, you know, all black, being blacked out like the Dark Knight, that's pretty cool too, right? So one of the final points to talk about is the price point. Of course, uh, this is the Walk Snail edition, so it's going to be more expensive. Uh, Walk Snail with Express or Less. 
basically exactly like I got here. Uh, looks like they're selling that on the Beta FPV website for two twenty nine. It doesn't show anything on there about being a special, you know, sort of shopping holiday season sale sort of thing. Uh, if I switch over to the HD zero. Uh, and Express LRS still, uh, it comes at a two nineteen ninety nine, so a little bit cheaper. And then the uh, analog version. Let me move this out of the way. The analog version of this comes in at one oh nine. So something to consider if you know maybe you like to look at HD, but you're not ready to spend for HD. There is two options if you're looking for this sort of quad. You know, prop protection, eighty eight millimeters from motor post to motor post. And something that, you know, I, I have been advocating for 2S 2-inch for a long time. It seems like it's been two years or so that I thought there was a lot of exploration we could do there in not only whoops, like a 75 millimeter 2S whoop. I think that is something where I hope to see it because I enjoy 2S whoops in the house, but 85 millimeters is a little bit big for me on a regular basis, especially for the way I like to fly. But 75 millimeter and 2S, I like that. And my last question for you is, if you were a member of the Breakfast Club, which one would you be? I think I'd be the basket case. Because you remember that one line when she talked about, I don't think the kind of friends I would have would mind? I don't think the kind of friends I have would mind if you were in one of these other groups either. All right, if you have any comments or questions about the Meteor 85 HD that I've got here in my hot little hands, please let me know in the comment section below. I appreciate your time. Thanks for watching.